and uh, and Conor McGregor against Khabib, yeah. underdog, probably. But if you won, there's an opportunity to win. If you won, that's that's the legend forming. He's now in the conversation for the greatest of all time, yep. without argument. And if you look at the way that Habib ran through so many people, yeah. Connor hung in there, you know. Yeah, and it could have been made a fight of it. It could have been. What do you think about that matchup? It's one of the one of the greats, one of the great matchups that you've made, Connor McGregor versus Khabib. Yeah, I mean, at the time, I was incredibly criticized for putting together the spot that had the the scene with the bus in it yeah you know yeah the fucking media is but they were saying that i was pandering to the, to the you know to the violence that happened and trying to, i'm telling you a story telling you a story of how we got here and how big this fight is and how bad the blood is between these guys and i mean i think that's what we do the best job at is telling the fucking stories of why i we go into Monday. It's fight week. We got a whole list of things that we do mm. fight week, right? And then you get right down to the press conference on Thursday, the weigh-ins on Friday, and then the fights on Saturday. Now, my people fly back home. They go to bed on Sunday night, and it's Groundhog Day. We wake up again on Monday, and it starts all over again. Every weekend, every Saturday for a year. Mm-hmm. So... There's lots of stories that need to be told. There's lots of, when you think about what I compete with, whatever takes your attention on a Saturday night is my competitor. So you're always trying to build a foundation for great stories. And like, if the fighters step up, they step up and they can together create greatness. That's it. That's exactly right. So when we are aligned, like when you get to the UFC, I mean, you just saw it with MVP. Um, You're going to see it with Kayla Harrison and... uh, so many others that, that that have come from other organizations and they get here, they notice immediately the difference between fighting here and fighting wherever they were before. It's not even comparable to the impact it has on you when you leave whatever organization you're with and you come to the UFC. And I think that it gives them a sense of, holy shit, I, I, I can really, I mean, MVP when he came, I mean, there were probably more people at the press conference than any fight he'd ever fought in in, in, in in Bellator. You know what I mean? And you feel that energy and you feel that you feel the difference of the impact of being here. And I think it takes a lot of these guys to another level. Yeah. Just the aura of it. Like 100%. this is where you're supposed to step up. Yeah. It's the way people feel about Ted talks when they're giving right. lectures. Right. This is your moment. You get 15 minutes and this, you better say so some true. interesting shit. Yeah, and Kayla Harrison, by the way, is a badass. I can't wait to see what happens there. She was walking around with like this sleeveless shirt the night of the fights, and holy shit. <laughs> she is jacked, man. It's crazy. Two time Olympic gold medalist. Right. You, you don't fuck with those people. <laughs> you win you win a medal, you're 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 made of something special. So true. Especially in judo. Yeah. Especially in American judo, where it's not 100%. you don't have many training partners that are great. So you've got to fucking work for it. 